All right, let's talk about the Detroit Lions here. This is obviously a team heading into an absolutely massive week four primetime matchup against the surprisingly undefeated Seattle Seahawks. The Lions have been hit with some unfortunate news, dealing with some injuries over the course of the past few days and weeks. But recently, Dan Campbell and his staff made a really smart move that I think is perfect for the long-term trajectory of this team. I'm Nick, and this is Saturday Morning Inspection. All right, so this Lions squad obviously sitting at 2-1, and one, disappointing week to defeat defensively. Mainly, they bounced back last week, but they are heading into a big-time matchup. Monday Night Football against the Seattle Seahawks, a Seahawks team that actually has done a lot of success against the Lions. As good as Detroit has been over the past few years, the Seahawks have handled them pretty well, at least in some pretty close games. But it looks like the Lions continue to have injury issues. We know up front defensively, center Frank Ragnow has been hit with the injury bug as well. But the Lions just made a smart move with him specifically, even though in the short term it may be uh, tough to hear. Let's pull up this article here. This is courtesy of the Detroit Free Press. Frank Ragnow wanted to do it, but the Lions said no. Lions coach Dan Campbell said the Lions will err on the side of caution this week and hold Ragnow, their Pro Bowl center, out of the Monday night's game against the Seattle Seahawks at Ford Field. Ragnow, 28, suffered a partially torn pectoral muscle in last week's win over the Arizona Cardinals and told coaches he wanted to play through the injury this week. We're going to put Frank down this week, Campbell said. That's kind of an interesting way to word it. Uh, the team facility in Allen Park. So I'll go ahead and get that out of the way. We can go round and round if we want. We're not going to mess with that. Look, Frank's tough. I mean it. He's tough as nails. If anybody can play through it, it's him. I think we got to be smart. It's early in the year. We got a lot of football left. I think this is a really smart move by Dan Campbell, and I think that last sentence hits the nail on the head. This is a brutal, long 17-game season. You're not going to go 13-4, and 12-5 and five every year. I mean, the Lions still certainly could, but the reality is it's all about getting to the playoffs in a best position to make a Super Bowl run and potentially risking a long-term injury from Frank Ragnow would not help that cause, especially for a Week 4 matchup against an out-of-division opponent. All right, before we get a deeper dive into this, Lions fans, I want to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Week four, Seahawks, Lions. I think it's probably one of the games of the week, to be totally honest. I think it's one of the more interesting pseudo rivalries we've seen out of the NFC. Give us your prediction. Final score, Seattle, Detroit, in the comment section below. I want to hear from you guys. All right, well, anyone who's regular viewers of the show knows that my co-host obviously is not with me here today. He's dealing with a lot of the hurricane after effects. He lives in the middle of the state of South Carolina. I live much closer uh, to the coast, so I kind of avoided the damage of the storm. He's uh, fine. His family's fine, all that kind of good stuff. They're just currently without power, so he obviously can't record. And you can see probably the production quality is a lot lesser because I'm doing it just myself today in my office. So again, for anyone who's used to a certain uh, production quality on the show, I apologize. It's just me figuring out to record it at 5 a.m. in the morning on uh, Saturday morning as we're trying to work through the power issues of the storm. I think a lot of people out there, you've seen the news, a lot of the destruction with the hurricane. It, it, it's a bad time. So again, thoughts and prayers for everyone, mainly, of course, North Carolina. They, they got it rough, East Tennessee, and everyone involved with the storm negatively. You know, we're thinking about all you guys. Hopefully everyone can get through it just fine. But when it comes to the Detroit Lions, look, I think this is a great move by Dan Campbell. This is a team that has a different set of expectations. You don't have to worry about the culture anymore. You don't have to worry about proving to the players, the fan base, the front office, the coaching staff, that you can win 12, 13 games, that you can win a division title, that you can make a deep playoff run. They've proved that last year, right? So now it's all about just getting back to the playoffs and get yourself in a position to make a run at the end of the postseason. And I think that's why last season was really important for Detroit, even though they didn't obviously make it to the Super Bowl. That Let's call it what it is, that blown opportunity in the second half against the 49ers was a really tough way to go. But at least they proved themselves that they could do it, right? They could go to the NFC Championship game. They could get themselves an opportunity to win that game. And if they go to the Super Bowl, who knows? They play the Chiefs, a team they beat, of course, earlier that season, week one. So now that they've proven all that, the core of the team believes they can win. It doesn't really matter if they fall to two and two, which I don't think they will, but let's say they do. They go into their bye, they get healthier out of their bye, they get Ragnall back, and they focus on the long term. You don't want to turn a tough situation, Ragnall, with a, a pec injury into a season-altering injury. If you miss Ragnall for one game, you know, it's tough, but you can move beyond it. If you miss Ragnall for the entire season and the postseason, that may limit your opportunities to win the Super Bowl. And I go back to what Dan Campbell said after the 49ers defeat last year in the playoffs when he said, 
You don't get a lot of opportunities like this. The NFL is really tough. He kind of walked it back a little later, but I think he was actually speaking the truth. You don't get a lot of really great opportunities, and that's exactly what the Lions are managing here. They understand that an opportunity to win a Week 4 primetime game isn't the same as an opportunity to make a deep playoff run. And I understand, right, seeding, field position, all of that, winning the division title, home games, away games, it may matter to some teams. But this Lions team, I don't think it really does matter anymore. They were up by 17 in the second half, I believe, in San Francisco. I think they can go about anywhere in the NFC, frankly, because the NFC is very beatable if you look at most of the teams, and win. I don't think having a packed house at Ford Field does it make that big of a difference to the players. Probably not. This is a much more mature team. This isn't a young, up-and-coming, scrappy team anymore. They're not the underdog. They're the favorite. They're the vets. They've been there before. This is the team that you know won their back-to-back winning seasons. This is the team that won their division last year, won a couple playoff games last year. They've got a quarterback in Jared Goff who started in the Super Bowl, right? They've got a lot of veteran guys across this entire roster, whether you look at offensive line, linebackers, you know, even secondary where they're young in a lot of positions. They've got some guys who have been around there as well. Receivers, of course, veteran guys who are talented. You don't need to worry about home field advantage. You don't need to worry about going 13 and 14 wins, right? Now, obviously, you want to, right? You're not going to turn that down. But this is not the same strategy you hold for a 2023 squad. And I think that's what's really smart about Dan Campbell here. He understands the most important thing for this team is to get to the playoffs as healthy as possible. And their schedule, it's kind of brutal if you look at it, right? The NFC North is very, very tough this year. The Vikings are surprising a lot of people. They're playing good football. Packers without Jordan Love. LaFleur is doing a great job coaching that football team. The Bears have talent, even though they look kind of terrible, to be honest, for the first two weeks. But I think Caleb Williams, their young quarterback, will get better. The NFC North is going to be a challenge this year. I still think the Lions are the favorite. I still think they probably win that division when it's all settled. But even if you don't, even if you go 10-7 and seven and get into the postseason, does it, would anyone be surprised if the Lions win a couple postseason games on the road? No, absolutely not. Especially if you have to go to a, a Tampa or go to a New Orleans Saints or go to an Atlanta in the first round of the wild card round. I trust Detroit to win that game. It's in the Dome or it's in Tampa. Great weather. And even if they have to go on the road to Green Bay, they're used to going to Green Bay. Right? There's a lot of situations. If they have to go to San Francisco, they proved it last year that they certainly can. They sort of should have beaten San Francisco in San Francisco. There is no road trip in the NFC that gives the Lions any pause. So at this point in time, it's all about managing the long-term trajectory of the team. Sitting Frank Ragnall for a game is a smart strategy to take. I know Lions fans, it stinks because you're dealing with a lot of injuries. You look at, of course, uh, uh, Barnes on the defensive line, Davenport as well. But look, this is a team set up for the long-term success, trying to make a Super Bowl run. Managing that run is a smart strategy to take, and I credit Dan Campbell for taking the long-game approach here, and I think it'll pay big dividends for Detroit.